Well, hello, Scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome to, what is this, part five of me dealing with Jason's gold ore? I guess we'll call it part five. We won't count the Q&A session I had in the last video as a part of this, because basically I just answered questions. I didn't do any work on it. So, anyway, we got to smelt this stuff down today. Let's take a close-up look at it. Sulfides in there. I don't know if you can see them sparkling in the sunlight. Well, in the lab lights, anyway. It's gone a little rusty. Um, it's been sitting around for a few days. Boy, those sparkles just aren't showing up. It's very sparkly. All those little sulfide faces are sparkling in there. It's just not showing up on the camera very well. Um, but yeah, it's gone a little rusty sitting around for a few days. Um, in my snuffer bottle in wet. I just dried it out in this. I can see a little bit of gold here and there But it's mostly sulfides and Probably a little bit of blonde sand mixed in too So this is what we've got to smelt down to find the gold All right, so let me contemplate ways to do this so, how exactly am I going to smelt this stuff? Okay, this is liable to be controversial. There's as many different opinions on how to do this as there are people doing it. There's as many different recipes out there as there are people doing it. Everybody has their own favorite recipe. They have maybe several favorite recipes depending on the type of ore they're dealing with. And it's just crazy. I've got some ingredients back here. You know, uh... This is liable to be controversial, so just feel free to leave a comment. You guys can argue it out in the comments about what's the best way to do this, and I, maybe I'll learn something, so go right ahead. Um, so I've got, I've got some of the common ingredients here that people use. Uh, I'm not counting. I don't have the borax and the um, soda ash up here because uh, those are big bags. I've got it at. But, you know, the other stuff that people use in their flux is like potassium nitrate, silica sand, carbon or charcoal. Some people use flour or sugar. I'll explain why in a little bit. Uh, got some pre-mixed Chapman's flux here and some Chapman's flux thinner. Um, got some lead oxide or litharge. Got some actual lead metal over here, too. So, yeah. So I've got all of the ingredients that a lot of people would use to make a flux, all right? So I'm going to try and keep this simple because I'm not going to do this the way Jason's doing it. Um, Jason tries to, he's trying to reduce the sulfides. He's trying to get them absorbed in the slag, and he's trying to release the gold that they contain. And then he's trying to get the gold all collected in a button or in a collector metal button. So there's a lot of moving parts there that all have to work just right. And if you watch Jason's last smelting video, well, he was having some trouble getting his recipe right, too. I plan on keeping this simple, and I'm going to deviate from the way Jason's doing it, especially since I don't have a huge amount of material here. Since I only have a small amount of material, this opens up opportunities to do things a little bit differently than the way Jason's been doing it. So let me outline exactly how I plan on doing this, okay? First thing I'm going to do is something Jason hasn't done in quite a while. I'm going to take this stuff and I'm going to roast it. Basically, put it over high heat and bake these sulfides in here and turn them into oxides. Drive the sulfur off. Atmospheric oxygen will go in there and combine with the metals and we'll wind up with oxides instead of sulfides. Once we have oxides, we won't have to worry about a matte layer forming during the smell you know, during the pour. That just won't be an issue. The flux will absorb all those oxides and the world will be a beautiful place. I'm not sure why Jason doesn't roast his ore. I mean, he's doing fairly large quantities, which makes it a little difficult since, you know, you kind of have to spread it out thin and heat it evenly and stir it so everything gets, you know, in contact with the atmosphere. Maybe difficult to do on a large scale. I don't know. I haven't tried it on his scale. But that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to roast this first and convert all the sulfides in here into oxides. And then I don't think the flux is going to be that difficult to figure out. Uh, in fact, I think I'm just going to use the pre-made Chapman's flux here. 
and uh, probably put a little bit of thinner in it just to make sure that all the fine gold in here has a chance to uh, fall down through the liquid and collect in the puddle of collector metal in the bottom. Okay. Now, speaking of collector metal, a lot of people would use um, some lead oxide or litharge in their flux and then add a little bit of carbon in the form of either charcoal or flour. You know, every every prospector out in the out in the back of beyond has in his in his mess kit some flour. So, you know, that's a convenient source of finely divided carbon. They'll use that. Sugar works too, as far as I understand. I've never tried sugar. Charcoal works. And what it's the, the purpose of this is to um, react with the lead oxide and reduce it to lead metal. And the theory is you're going to have finely divided droplets of lead metal all through your flux that are going to flow slowly down through your flux, collecting any bits of precious metal as they go, and then collecting in a puddle in the bottom. That's the theory. Um, there are some problems with this idea, though, because, because your carbon will tend to react with oxides and metals that are more reactive than lead. And while most of the metals in here are going to be more reactive than lead, so it's going to release a lot of these other metals in here that are oxides. And we don't want that. We don't want, you know, free iron in here. We don't want free nickel. We don't want free copper. There's already going to be enough copper in here. I saw some bits of copper wire in here. Where they came from, I don't know. But there's copper wire in here. So, um, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to um, not use litharge and uh, carbon. We'll just set that aside. Um, not going to use any potassium nitrate to try and oxidize the, uh, the um, sulfides because we're going to do that through just simple roasting, so we'll set that aside. And uh, some people add uh, silica sand, finely divided silica to their uh, flux too to prevent it from chewing through their crucibles too quickly because the flux will steal silica from the crucible. So if you put some silica in your flux, it's less likely to do that, or at least it slows it down. I'm going to leave the silica up here because I have another idea for it. Plus, you know, it could come in handy for that. Oh, I think there is some in the Chapman's flux. I could be wrong, but I think there is. Um, I'm going to add a little silica to this before I roast it just to keep this stuff from agglomerating together and forming big clinkers, okay? Um, that's an old prospector's trick to just add a little bit of, of finely divided silica to your cons before roasting, and they won't tend to stick together that way. The silica kind of prevents that. So instead of becoming a big lump that doesn't get air to everything, it'll, it'll stay a fine powder, and the air can get to everything, and we'll get a, hopefully get a good roast on this. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, instead of using litharge and, and some form of carbon, I'm just going to put some lead in there. I don't know, maybe 10 grams. That might be overkill. But uh, I think my couples can handle that much lead. So uh, we'll see. Maybe get close to 10 grams. And we'll hope for the best. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to add some thinner to the Chapman's Flux and thin the consistency of it down so the fine gold in here will have a better chance to uh, make its way down through the puddle of flux to the puddle of collector metal in the bottom and we'll leave it in the uh, in the furnace for a good long time so that uh, that can happen it won't be too quick to pull it out and uh, hopefully won't leave a lot of gold in the slag so that's my plan um once uh this is roasted. We get the flux mixed up, get it in here. We'll put this in the furnace. Like I say, heat it up, melt it down, pour it in a cone mold. We should get a little button of lead. We can put that button of lead in the cupel. Put it in my home-built cupelling furnace. And uh, hopefully, we'll cupel all, all that uh, lead away and be left with a little button of gold. So we'll see how all that works and how far I get on that in this video because, well, i got a lot, of, a lot of work to do around the house as well as this. So, uh, whew. All right. I've already been a busy boy today, cleaned all the gutters and did some other stuff. So 
let me spend a little while on this anyway before I get back to the housework, and we'll see how far I get. All right. Since I've only got a small amount of material here, I don't think there's any point in getting the big uh, skillet out and uh, trying to do this over the top of the uh, boundary furnace or anything like I've done before. I think we'll just do it like in a spoon out here on top of the bench over a propane torch. I'll try to work over a uh, corningware dish here just in case I drop anything because I can be a little clumsy. We don't want to lose a lot of stuff here. I'm going to put just sort of an arbitrary equal looking amount of uh, fine sand in the uh, in with the uh, concentrates here. Totally unmeasured, just kind of by eye. Let me see if I can get it in the spoon here without making a mess. Pan may not be the best container for this. All those ridges are catching stuff. Which is what they're designed to do, let's face it. Okay. That looks pretty good. We will try roasting like that and see how it goes. Hopefully it won't be a disaster. We'll give this a shot and see how it goes. There's a bit of a light breeze coming from behind me, blowing that way, so I shouldn't have to breathe the fumes coming off of this. You get it warm here. And I'm sorry for the harsh lighting conditions today. I hope, do hope you can see this. Get this good and hot. Might have been better off with my map gas torch. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not thinking we're going to get hot enough for something to happen here. Well, even though I'm standing upwind, I got a whiff of something just then. So there's something going on. We're cooking here. Let me get something to stir this with. Spread it out nice and thin. Oh, I see a little bit of popcorning. That will happen as you're roasting sulfides. Some of that stuff will start popping. Yeah, we've got some popcorn going on. I don't know if that's showing up in the in the video or not, but uh, yeah. Hopefully anything that pops out of the spoon will wind up in the corningware dish. That would be nice. The spoon's starting to turn colors. And unless it's my imagination, I think that the, uh, the cons are turning color too. I think they're getting darker. They are. Yeah, the stuff down in the bottom where it's hottest, that's turning black. Yeah. You break up the clods. Oh, yeah. I just got a whip of uh, sulfur dioxide. The wind changed direction briefly. Oh, yeah. So this is working. Not the most convenient way to roast your concentrates, but uh, sort of quick and dirty method. We're getting rid of the sulfur. We're converting those sulfides, which gave Jason so much trouble. We're slowly converting them into oxides, which should be a whole lot less trouble to smelt. Oh, yeah. I think this is working good. Oh, yeah. Look how much darker it is. We got some smoke coming off. There could be some arsenopyrite in this, too. And that white smoke might contain 
the arsenic oxide. So not something I really want to be breathing a lot of. I am glad I'm standing up wind. But this does seem to be working. I mean, just look how much darker this stuff has gotten. I do believe we are breaking down the sulfides. Oh, the, the spoon is red hot down in there. I don't know if that's showing up. So that means that the, the cons down on the base of the spoon are red hot. So uh, I don't want to bore you silly. So uh, this can take a few more minutes to complete. So I'll just keep up what I'm doing here. And we'll be back when I think it's done. There's a piece of gold right on the end of my screwdriver. I'll be back when I think it's done and we're ready to move on to the next step. So partway through the roasting process, I decided to get my map gas torch out. I think the propane was actually doing a good job, but I decided just to get it a little hotter. I don't know if that's showing up. You see that piece of gold right there? Whoa, it got a little too close. Nice piece of gold right there. As I stir this stuff around, I see lots of pieces of gold in there. Nice. Okay, let me keep roasting here. I think we're about done. There's really no more smoke or smell coming off of it. I just want to make sure I get it all good and hot and exposed to the air. So I'm going to stir it for another minute or two over this higher heat. And then we'll call it done. All right, I think that worked pretty well, actually, for this small amount of material. It was a little bit fiddly to hold on to the spoon the whole time and stir it with the screwdriver. But I think we got a pretty good roast on this stuff. I mean, the color, the color change is dramatic. There's no longer any red to it. It's all black. It's just kind of a, a dark gray with all of the sand I've put in it. If I hadn't put any sand in it, I'm sure it would be black. Um, didn't get any clinkers forming. It's still a nice powder. This stuff's still wicked hot right now. I'm going to let it cool off a little bit. And then we'll, uh, we'll work with it some more. But I think that was a pretty successful roast. It certainly doesn't look like sulfides anymore. And when I was at the end there, there was no more smoke or smell of sulfur coming off of it. So I think we got a pretty good roast. So let me let this cool down. And we'll figure out what to do next. All right. So this had a chance to cool down a little bit. And uh, I think that went very well. I'm going to dump this out of the spoon here. Make sure you get everything out of it. Um, while I was stirring this with a screwdriver during the roasting, big flakes of gold kept coming to the surface as I was stirring. Saw a lot of them. So I'm pretty happy about that. Let me show you what this roasting has accomplished for us, all right? Zoom in as far as I can. So what we should have done with this process is converted all the iron sulfides in there into iron oxides, like magnetite. So here's my mining magnet. Will you look at that? Uh, we didn't have a lot of magnetic stuff in here before I roasted this stuff. It was not magnetic. I pulled all the magnetic stuff out during the panning process, you know, to get rid of all of this steel that was shed by my machinery and Jason's machinery. So, yeah, so I would say that's a pretty successful roast. We've converted those uh, iron sulfides into iron oxides. Now, a lot of people, they take their magnet in and they pull this out and just smelt what stayed. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to smelt all of this stuff. Because if there was gold trapped in those grains of iron sulfide, well, it's probably trapped in these grains of iron oxide now. So I think all of this needs to be smelted. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to smelt all of this. Uh, the flux should dissolve the iron oxide. I'm hoping it will anyway. We shall see. So now it's time to mix up some flux. Well, for some reason, people say flux should be mixed by volume, not by weight. Okay. Um, not sure why, but okay, that seems to be the way to do it. And the favorite measure of a lot of uh, prospectors is a shot glass. So a shot glass of concentrates, two shot glasses of this, a quarter shot glass of that. I don't have a shot glass. I don't drink anyway, so, you know, what do I need a shot glass for? 
So, and there's not very much here. This certainly wouldn't even fill a shot glass, even halfway full, probably. So what we're going to do is we're going to use my smallest beaker over here and kind of do our best guesstimates at getting the proportions that we want. So let me get all this stuff in the beaker and see what it amounts to. There's my paintbrush. Some of this stuff sticking in here. We want to get all of this stuff in the beaker. Including a little bit that I slopped onto the desktop here. All right. So there we are. So we are not very much. Well below even the uh, 25 milliliter um, mark on the beaker. So we're going to have to guesstimate proportions here. I'm going to guess we got about... Somewhere between 10 and 15 milliliters of material in here. Okay. So, from what I've been reading, and I could be wrong. Feel free to leave a comment. Um, this goes sideways. Well, no, I did it wrong. I need about twice as much Chapman's Flux as concentrates that I've got. So, let me see. Let's say I've got 15 grams of concentrates, which is probably on the high side. I, I don't think adding too much of this is going to be a problem. Too little of it could be. So let's say I've got 15 grams, which, like I say, could be on, on the high side or even really optimistic about what I've got in there. So double this would be 30 grams of Chapman Flux. 30 plus 15 is 45. So... Let's come up to right below the 50 milliliter mark on the beaker with the Chapman's Flux. It's a premixed flux. You can buy this. Let's see how we're doing here. And we need some more. Contains all kinds of stuff. A lot of the ingredients I was showing you, and some that weren't there. It's kind of a general purpose flux. All right, so we are right below the 50 milliliter mark on that beaker. So I think that's probably about enough Chapman flux. So say we've got 45 milliliters of material in here, and I want to add some thinner to it. So I want to add about another 25% of whatever this is of this. So I'm going to be somewhere between 10, 12 milliliters of this stuff. Just to make this stuff a little more fluid, I think that might be important. And again, I'm not too worried about getting a little bit more of this in here. I just don't want to use too little. Okay. We are a little over the 50 milliliter mark. So I will say that is probably good. I'm going to stir this all up pretty well. Okay. So there's our cons and our flux, all stirred up and ready to go. Now we need some collector metal. I mean, if these cons were rich enough, we could depend on the gold and silver they contain to just make its way all down to the, uh, the base of the uh, fire assay crucible and uh, form a puddle of metal on their own, but I don't think there's that much gold here in spite of me seeing a lot while I was roasting it. So we're going to add a collector metal to it. Let me get a scale and we'll cut some lead and throw some lead in. Okay, let's get some lead here. What did I say earlier? Uh, 10 grams? I think that's probably overkill. But we'll see. 
So that's a little about eight. Ten point six one. Okay, we will go with that. So that will be our collector metal. So now we've got everything we need. All right, I've got the uh, fire assay crucible in my home built foundry furnace here. Um, I have a video on how I built this furnace. It's just a couple of wraps at KO wool um, insulation held together with some wires and I've got a, a burner and a propane tank. That's all there is to it. Nothing much. This will get really, really hot. I've melted uh, copper in it, so copper is a pretty high melting point. Um, uh, I hope there's enough propane left in this tank to do the whole smelt. If not, I do have another tank and I can switch over in just a minute. So, not too big a deal. Let's get this thing lit and get this show on the road. Turn that down a little bit. We'll crank the heat up later once it's had a chance to warm up good. I don't want to thermally shock that brand new crucible and have it dump its contents all over the bottom of the furnace. So. We'll just let it warm up slowly and then ramp the heat up to uh, thermonuclear. I don't know how well that's showing up. The lighting is harsh out here in the bright sunlight, unfortunately. It's only been a couple minutes on fairly low heat. The lead's all melted already. So things are warming up in there. It doesn't take long. I think the, uh, the bottom of the uh, crucible is starting to glow a little bit, too. I'm going to leave it on low for a little while longer than ramp the heat up. Well, it's it's been a few more minutes. I hope that's showing up. The flux is starting to, to melt and bubble a little bit in there, even on low. So I think it's safe to uh, turn the heat up some and uh, speed this process up, get everything melted, and uh, get all the reactions going on in there that need to go. Okay, now we're cooking. Let me close the vent hole off a little bit more, and that will keep even more heat in. I gotta keep an eye on it and make sure it's not gonna boil over, though. I don't want to boil over. I'll have to kill the heat quick if it looks like it's gonna boil over. But hopefully we won't get too much, too much bubbling out of this. We'll see. Well, that's showing up, but the liquid's all melted. It's still bubbling, and I see little beads of metal on top, probably the lead. I'm gonna let that sit in there. Oh, it's hot, I gotta back up. I'm gonna let that sit in there on high heat until the bubbling stops and the liquid just lays down flat for a while. And uh, give the gold chance to migrate down into that puddle of lead in the bottom and all the little lead droplets to migrate down there and join that puddle and then we'll pour it off into the cone mold but it needs to just sit there and cook for a while maybe quite a while okay the liquid's perfectly flat and smooth down there I haven't seen any bubbling in a long time that's exactly what I want to see. Any gold's going to sink through that. Any lead beads are going to sink through that down to the bottom. All consolidate into a puddle down there, hopefully. Um, some authorities say to leave it like this for as long as an hour. I don't know if I'm going to leave it that long because I am a little worried about the crucible failing if I leave it at this high temperature for too long. I don't have a lot of experience with Chapman's Flux. I don't know what it'll do to the crucible. I don't know if it'll eat its way through it. So I'm not sure I'm gonna leave it in there for a full hour. Let me uh, start preheating some stuff so that we can get a pour going here. I'm gonna preheat my cone mold over here. I got a new small graphite cone mold. 
There's not enough material here for my big steel cone mold, so we'll use that. But I gotta preheat it and drive any moisture out. I'm gonna preheat this old frying pan too. We'll do the core in the frying pan, capture any slag. Okay, it's gotta reprocess it. But just to drive any moisture off so that there's not a steam explosion when I pour this stuff. Hot, even through the welding gloves, it's hot over here. Well, it's been about 40 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this just so I don't have to worry anymore about the uh, crucible eating through. Oh yeah, look at that. The crucible is eating through. That's not good. I think we got to it just in time or something bad might have happened. So a big slug of lead go in. That's good. All right, as much is gonna pour out. Yeah, there's something stuck on the inside. I'm not sure what it is. We'll have to wait for it to cool down and have a look. We'll have to wait for that to cool down and pop that out and see what kind of button we got. And hopefully there's not a lot of lead in the slag. Okay, so now it's just a matter of letting everything cool down. That's going to take a while. The slag's breaking up as it cools. I keep hearing tinking sounds. Let's see if we can get some on video over here of it shattering. Probably not. I think I'm a little late. Oh, there we go. Hey, perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what the slag's supposed to be doing. Breaking up as it cools down. Okay, excellent. It's still wicked hot though. It's only been a few minutes since I poured, so this has got to sit here a long time. I'm sure the lead's still liquid down in the bottom of that cone mold. Not, not ready to turn it out yet. Well, it's only been a couple more minutes. I moved it out of the sun and under the lights at my lab bench. Get a look at it. It's still got to cool down a lot before I do anything else with it. I'm just watching the uh, the slag break up. Got nice cracks in it there. It's constantly cracking and tinking. You know what it looks like? You know, an old rock hound like me. It looks like mahogany obsidian, which I guess, technically, we could have made mahogany obsidian here from uh, the slag with all that iron, iron oxide in it after the... Uh, roasting so yeah volcanic glass with a lot of iron oxide in it it's kind of mahogany obsidian that's kind of what we got here I think all right we'll just let this continue to cool down and see what we get all right this stuff's had about an hour and a half to uh, cool off well tell me that stuff doesn't look like mahogany obsidian that's that's crazy. It also looks as sharp as glass. Uh-oh. We got a few beads of lead in the... Uh... Yeah, there's another one. We got a few beads of lead in the slag. Not, that's not good. But, uh, I had better put some uh, leather gloves on before I handle this stuff too much because I will be cut, I'm sure. It looks as sharp as scalpels there. Yeah, we got some low, late winter sun coming up under my enclosure here from the west. It rarely lights up my table over here. Get a 
got here? Well, looks like we got a nice bead of lead here. I have to uh, hammer some stuff off of it. Do I see any sign of mat? I'm going to have to do this. Just have to be careful here. That might be like a paper thin bit of mat underneath the lead, but paper thin. Let's see if we get some more of the slag off of the lead button. We'll weigh it up and see how much of our lead we got back. I can see some beads in the uh, in the slag. But we do have a good sized button, so that's good. Ah, there we go. That's looking much better, much cleaner. All right. There's our lead button. Let me get my scale out and we'll weigh it up and see how much of the lead we got back. Okay, let's see. 8.03, and we put in about 10.6 grams, if memory serves. I'll have to look at the video. So, about 2.6 grams of lead have gone MIA. I do see some, um, I do see some little bits of lead in some of the slag. I kind of doubt from what I've seen, that there's 2.6 grams of lead in the slag. I mean, they're tiny, tiny beads. And they might add up to that much, but I kind of doubt it. I suspect some of the lead got oxidized. And then we've got... I'll have to give you a close-up look at this, probably with my phone. This is a very, very interesting looking uh, formation that was right underneath the lead. Boy, that's sharp. I'm going to be bleeding here in a second. Uh, yeah, there's another piece of it right there. I do believe that is matte, but it is like paper thin and super shiny. So my roast wasn't perfect, but I think it was uh, pretty good. Definitely converted most of the sulfides into oxides. All right, I'll give you a close-up look at that with my phone. There's that layer that I think is matte. That was right underneath the lead prill. Um, it kind of looks like sulfides. It's it's not showing up so good in the uh, in the sun out here, but it's got the color of uh, pyrite to it. So, I'm thinking that's sulfides that did not get converted during the roast. But, you know, look, it's, it's like paper thin. Wow. And it's just glass underneath it. So, converted most of the sulfides over. All right. Then we can take a look at the damage to this uh, crucible here. Yeah, stuff was starting to leak out through it. There must be a crack there, or several cracks. I mean, it doesn't feel worn thin on the inside, but I was looking at it down in the furnace, and it's like, there's something going on on this side of the crucible. I couldn't quite see what. So that's what I decided it needed to come out. A little bit of insulation made it in there. Something stuck on the side over here. I don't know what that is. Some kind of hard stuff. Um, I don't really see... Any lead? I think it all poured out. I saw a solid slug of lead come out when I poured it. It was probably this frill down here. So, okay. So we've had a semi-successful smelt. There's a little bit of uh, lead in in the in the slag there. A few little beads of lead in the slag. There's a little bit of mat in the slag, although hardly any. And we got a frill. We got uh, eight tenths of our lead back. Hopefully, the vast majority of the gold's in there too. All that's left now is to pellet it down. But it's almost sunset, so we'll do that tomorrow.
All right, got my home-built compelling oven out. Um, I had a series of videos I did on uh, building this home-built compelling oven. I'll put a link in the upper right if you're interested. I um, had a contest to see um, what to name it, and my buddy Rick came up with uh, Furnace of Truth. So, uh, yeah, this is the Furnace of Truth. We're going to compel down our little prill of lead and see how much gold is left. Now, the uh, oven is still heating up. I just started it a little while ago. So we got a ways to go. Temperatures are in centigrade. But uh, let's take a quick look inside the old furnace of truth here, or also known as the portal to hell. Even though we're not quite up to temperature yet. Oh, yeah. Woo-wee. Getting hot in there. So we'll just let this continue to heat up. And once we're up to temperature, we'll put the prill in there and... Uh, see what happens okay it's been a little while we're essentially at our set point here so let's get this button in here and get this compelling started okay i'm gonna leave the door open just to crack Probably won't be able to see much that way, but uh, make sure that some oxygen can get in there to oxidize that lead away, the lead oxide, and the lead oxide will be absorbed in the cupel. And then uh, anything that doesn't oxidize and doesn't get absorbed should be precious metals. So we'll just let that go. I'll give you a peek at it here in a bit once it's melted and we got a nice puddle of lead in there. All right, I peeked inside the furnace a little while ago. It's only been a little while since I put the button in, but I peeked inside and it's like there wasn't much happening. I realized I didn't have the temperature set high enough over here. I forgot that the last time I used this, I had moved the temperature down for another project. Back when I was processing the stuff from my stock pot and I was uh, getting some uh, palladium sponge, um, yeah, I didn't need such a high temperature, so I turned this down. So I've turned it up. So I think as we heat up, we'll start seeing some action there. I'll give you a close-up look once something interesting starts happening in there. Okay, temperatures come up a lot. Let's take another peek inside here. Or I guess you, this would be your first. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Puddle of lead. Uh, lead oxide's rolling off of it. I don't know if we can get a, a good view of that. And... Uh, Soaking into the hot capel. Excellent. So I'm going to close this up again. Leave just a little gap for some air to get in there. And we'll just let that go. And I'm going to take off and do some other stuff so I'm not standing around breathing lead fumes. And we'll come back and check on it in a little while and hopefully it will be done. All right, I've been off mowing the acreage for a while. So let's see what we've got in here. Whoa, that is hot. Huh. What am I seeing there? Not much. Whoa. Glad I got the long tongs. Wow, that is hot. Okay. Huh. Focus. Looks like there's a little tiny bead of gold up there. Maybe the thing splattered. Wow, that's hot. The heat coming off of it. It's terrible. But I'm not sure what I'm seeing in the center there. Some sort of donut shape in the center. I don't know what that is. It's hard, whatever it is. Okay, we're going to have to let this cool down and then investigate and see just what in the world we've got going on in this capel. I have no clue. Not the result I was expecting, that's for sure. All right, this has had a chance to cool down. Now, there looks like there's a few gold-looking specks around the very edge where the pool of lead was. There's one right there. There's a few smaller ones if I look with my loop. What is this thing in the center? Well, I wasn't sure at first, but now that's cool enough for me to handle it. It is a button of very silvery metal which surprises me. 
Um, there was a fair amount of gold in there, but uh, I don't know what this silvery stuff is. Um, there could have been some silver in there. I would be surprised if there wasn't some silver in there, but um, that looks like a lot of silver. So <laughs> I'm not sure where all that silver came from. Um, I did still see some silvery stuff in the uh, in the cons at a, at a few points when I was panning them. Um, there was also copper in there, so that could be high in copper, whatever that is. Not sure how to handle it. Um, I suspect what we've got here is just, you know, a mixture of, like, base metals like copper, maybe some silver, and whatnot. Um, yeah, you old smelting hands out there, leave a comment. Give me some advice on how to deal with this. I'm tempted to throw some more lead in here and redo it. And see if I can get rid of any more of this base metal. I don't know. I um, certainly probably need to incorporate those little bits of gold up there into whatever button we've got here. But uh, yeah, I'm really confused by this result. Not sure which way to go. Um, this is not lead, whatever it is. It uh, was not molten when I pulled it out. It was quite solid. And uh, yeah. So whatever gold we got, except for the little bits up there, apparently are incorporated in this button. Well, that was kind of a totally unexpected result. Um, sitting here thinking about it, of course, you know, I talked about copper. There could be copper in this. I'd be very surprised if there wasn't because I saw copper wire in with the concentrates. Um, where the copper wire came from, I don't know. Everybody's saying Jason's using debt cord for setting off his explosives, not copper wire. I don't know. Uh, but there was copper wire in it, so there's probably copper in this. Um, I'm thinking iron. In fact, let me get my magnet, and we'll see if it's magnetic. Not a bit magnetic. Okay, so it's not iron. Um, I elected not to use any um, carbon in the smelt anyway, so we didn't have any chance of um, iron oxide getting reduced to iron metal. So... I'm thinking that there must have been more silver in there than I was seeing. Uh, quite possibly. Um, silver, copper, and gold, I'm thinking, are incorporated in that button. And probably we'll have to part them with uh, nitric acid to uh, sort it out. Um, but leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Would I, would I recompelling it? Just throw some more lead in it and uh, do it again. You think I can get rid of any of the base metals and come up with something a little bit cleaner? I don't know. A little out of my depth here. It's an interesting but totally unexpected result. Let me weigh this button. Okay, let's see if we can get a weight on this button. Oh, 0.72 of a gram. So there's a fair amount of metal there. Pretty dense for its size. So maybe there is some some gold, some silver, some copper in there. Those are pretty dense metals. Pretty sure we got rid of all the lead. So, uh, hmm. Okay, not sure where to go from here. So let me think about it and figure out exactly where I do want to go from here. And let me hear from you guys uh, out there who are old hands at smelting. Jim, you feel free to chime in. Anybody else who's done this before, let me know what you think. And we'll see if we can uh, get some gold out of this in the end. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to see any future videos in this series. There might be another one. <laughs> I was hoping to end it here, but there might be another one, so subscribe. And if you found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.